Each morning we are born again. What we do today is what matters most. Welcome back, y'all. Welcome back, y'all. Welcome biggity, biggity, biggity back, y'all. Hey, you guys, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi. My name is Kelsey, and I'm here for you guys every Sunday and Wednesday, and now Fridays, to talk about my BSG journey. It's my hope that through these videos, you're able to find the answers to questions you've been looking for or the path to choosing surgical weight loss is made that much easier. Welcome back for real. <laughs> if you guys are unaware, or if you're new to my channel, um, I did take about a three week hiatus from posting on my YouTube channel. Um, but I was still active on my other social media platforms, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat. If you're not following me there, please make sure to follow me. All of my links to my social and also my link tree are in the description box below. Um, I really took the time to kind of like hone in on me. Um, I really had to get my stuff and self aligned so that I could give you guys the quality content that I started making seven months ago. Um, this has been a journey. Um, not only is this a big journey physically, it's a big journey mentally. And I really got burnout. out. Um, not only do I do YouTube, I work a full-time job. I am a mom, I am a wife, um, I'm a friend, I'm a sister, I'm a daughter. Um, so all of that started to kind of like fade in together and I couldn't separate life from YouTube and I really had to take some time to step back, breathe, refresh and come back to you guys rejuvenated and ready to give you guys content that I wanted to create. So to ensure that I am making content that I really enjoy, that I don't get burned out with just VSG content, I have included Freestyle Fridays. Freestyle Fridays is gonna be a video where I talk about something I really love. It could be decorating, hauls, a vlog, um, so many different things that I want to share with you guys that I want to, I mean, I, there's so much. Um, food, you know, I did have Tasty Thursdays, but I kind of want to move that to Friday. Um, I want to include that in stuff that, you know, is VSG related, but not VSG related. Um, some one of you guys made a really good point. Um, I posted on there that I know that this isn't VSG related, but it's something that's, you know, exciting to me on my most recent haul video. And I can't remember the name of the person who said it, but from what I can remember, she said, girl, this is VSG related. You're loving your body. You're loving yourself. So this is VSG related. People need to see that. Um, and so I guess I felt guilty about showing you guys anything that wasn't VSG related because that's why so many of you guys have come to my channel. Um, but I do want to let you guys know that I am more than VSG. And I feel like as I transition through my my VSG post-op, my life is going to change. I'm still going to do VSG related content, but I do want to include something that I love as well. So that's what Freestyle Fridays are. I hope that you guys enjoyed those videos and I look forward to bringing those to you. So today is our first weigh in on Wednesday. Bum, bum, ba -da, ba -da. In what, three weeks? So I will be weighing in for the first time since my last weigh in Wednesday video, um, I don't remember the title of it, but it was in early August. So this is my first time weighing in. Um, I don't know my my weight as of right now, but when I edit my video, I will put it here. So I will give you my stats for those who don't wanna watch the entire video or have no use for the content, just wanna know my weight progression. My starting weight was 330 pounds. My goal weight is 170 pounds and my current weight is da 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 all right y'all good morning we're gonna go ahead and do our first weigh in for september 2021 let me wake her up all right Two forty three point four, and my total pounds lost are. 
I inserted a slide right there because I feel like I, <laughs> I don't know my total pounds loss at this time. So I think it's best that I have the slide inserted, you know, so that you guys can see. So at this time, I don't know if there's going to be a change. Um, so you guys will be able to, you know, either, you know, see the change or not change here. But these are my stats. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and get into the topic for today. And I wanted to come and tell you guys, and I've been thinking about topics and information that I wanted to share with you guys that I felt like I needed to have when I was preparing for my surgery and then when I was post-op because I had so many questions and I was like you know what I really wish I had someone to talk to and I'm tired of driving these people crazy and I was like you know what I'm just gonna you know make these videos because I feel like it's important to make anyways so this video is going to be five things that really helped me through my post-operative phase like the first month to two months after these are items that i used daily and there's a couple there's a couple that i still use daily but these were my tried and true especially the first month after surgery these were you know within arm's reach within a blink of an eye i even took some of them to work so i'm going to go into these and i'm going to talk to you guys about these and hopefully if you guys are getting ready for your surgery or if you're in your post-op phase you'll be able to take these and use these for yourself and they'll help you too all right so the first of those items is going to be a heating pad it could be a simple heating pad i can't find mine right now i don't know where it is i thought i had put it in my drawer over there but i don't know where it is but I use my heating pad every day. Um, I think it was most useful for me, especially when I was winding down for the day, or if I started getting a little aches and pains in my incision area, or if my muscles were kind of cramping up in my stomach area, I would just, you know, sit on the couch with my husband or by myself, and I would take my heating pad and just tuck it right here, and it would just help to ease that pain, to relax those muscles, um, and it really helped with the I guess the treatment of my pain, um, it didn't bother my incisions. And my, and my doctor also recommended that I get a heating pad. Um, it was my tried and true. Even when I went back to work a week later, I took my heating pad with me and I was able to sit at my desk with my heating pad, you know, just on me. And it really helped to soothe me. Um, not only that, it helped with kind of keeping me warm. After my surgery, I have been more prone to getting cold and I felt like Sometimes I feel like I am just freezing from the inside out. So I would use that heating pad to kind of bring up my body temperature as well as um, putting it on my incisions. Um, so if you don't have a heating pad, I would definitely get one. I think Walmart has a few like for $10 or $12 or maybe even a little cheaper. I honestly feel like I got mine from a yard sale many years ago for whatever reason that I still happen to have. Like mine, I'm telling y'all, y'all, it is jank but it works really well it got the it got the job done and it helped me especially during the first couple of weeks of my post-op life number two is going to be liquid pain killer now this is just a regular equate walmart uh tylenol it's an adult extra strength let's see if we can can you get it to focus this is just an extra strength equate painkiller I was not told this and I didn't see any videos who said this and I didn't see anybody talking about this and it wasn't in my book when I was preparing for surgery. This is just a regular liquid Tylenol because as you know, when you first have your surgery, you can't take pills. You're not doing really pills except for like the Prilosec. I think mine was in a pill form. Um, so this really helped with pain management. In between taking my liquid painkiller that was prescribed by my physician, or my surgeon, I would alternate with this in between. Um, I think the worst, the hardest thing for me was to, I didn't want my pain to get to a point where it was unmanageable. Like that makes a pain management really hard. You don't want it to grow so big that it takes too much medicine to get it back down to a size where you can manage it. So in between my doses of my liquid, my narcotic that was prescribed to me, I did alternate with this. This is actually the second bottle that I had after my surgery. Um, and as you see, it's almost gone. I took this, you know, like clockwork. Um, I would take my narcotic painkiller and then I would say, however, I can't remember how, I don't exactly remember the time frame that I was taking it, but I would take a dose of this 
you know, wait some time and then take my narcotic painkiller. And it really, really, really helped to manage my pain. So put this on your shopping list along with the heating pad. It's very important that you have this. I'm telling you guys, listen, um, and a lot of people ask me, well, did you have a lot of pain? I really feel like this contributed to me not having so much pain because I did use this. I used this religiously. I, did, I used it because I felt like I needed it and it helped. And I feel like if I had have known prior to my surgery that I needed this, I would have been okay. I didn't find out that I could do this until after my surgery and I was just in a lot of pain in the beginning. And I called my physician and I said, hey, I'm in a lot of pain, what can I do? And they're like, why don't you get some liquid over the counter painkiller? It is okay for you to take, not ibuprofen. This is a Tylenol or, <gasps> okay, we're back. Uh, acetaminophen, not um, ibuprofen. We cannot do NSAIDs. This is acetaminophen, 500 milligrams, pain reliever, fever reducer. I think it was like $3 at Walmart. I'm telling you guys, you won't regret it. All right, the next item is going to be comfy clothing, comfy 90s, comfy short sets. Listen, I went out before my surgery and I think I have a vlog or just a video when I was preparing for my surgery. I went and bought, I think four or five of these. These are just like really comfortable nightgowns. This one says, let's snuggle. I had my surgery in February, so it was still kind of cold. And then I have this one. I still wear these because number one, they're comfortable. Number two, they're not restricting. They're long enough. You can lace around the house. And I bought enough of these, <laughs> lazy daisy. I bought enough of these to where I could, you know, number one, I could sleep in them. And then if I got up during the day, took a shower, I had enough to interchange. I could then switch into another one and spend the rest of my day in it and then switch into another one after showering that evening um, when I just constantly rotated the cycle out. Um, when I was going out for doctor's appointments, I wore like really loose fitting leggings and big shirts. Um, I think that comfort is key, especially after surgery. I see a lot of people who say they're going to buy the compression outfits and the compression garments. I couldn't have imagined trying to stuff myself into a compression garment after that surgery. Um, now, you know, if you're going to do it, do you boo-boo, but I couldn't. My pain level was a little too high. Um, I was a little too uncomfortable. I didn't start wearing anything that was tied on my stomach area until probably about four months post-op. That's when I felt the most comfortable, but these were lifesavers. I wore one um, to surgery with a pair of leggings um, and like an oversized sweater on top of it. And I'll even insert the picture from the day of my surgery when I came home. I have on this one, I think. This one was my favorite. Um. But I'm telling you, stock up. Walmart has these for like six dollars and fifty cents. I feel like buy enough for a week. If you can't buy them all at one time, buy a couple here, buy a couple there. I'm telling you, you will not regret re regret. You won't regret it. You will not regret having these in your repertoire. Is that the right word? In your armory <laughs> for surgery. I don't. I still wear these. I'm a big. I'm a big fan of house stuff like this. I also like, you know, comfy socks and house shoes. It's nothing like being at home. You take a nice shower, you get comfortable, you put on your comfortable clothes and you're sitting on your couch with your heating pad and you're with family or you're just by yourself. I'm telling you, comfort is key to having an easy, smooth post-op life. All right, so the number four item that I'm gonna talk about, I don't have it here, it is actually at my dad's. It is one of those chair pillows. And if I can find a picture, I will insert it. Um, I didn't know until after my surgery that I was going to need to, I was gonna have to sleep upright for many months. Um, and I know that there's a lot of people who don't have the luxury that I have of a bed that lets up and down. That's something that my husband purchased before we even thought about surgery because he's extra. And so I actually had that luxury and I still have that luxury to this day. I do not sleep with the bed flat at all um, because even if I don't eat trigger foods, I still have a little bit of acid reflux. Um, but as long as I lift, lift up the bed just a tad or I sleep with enough pillows under my head, I'm good to go. Um, but these pillows 
have that were a lifesaver for me, especially when I wasn't sleeping at home. Um, they they enabled me to sit up comfortably and sleep, whether it was on the couch, it was on the bed. Um, it really helped me. And I feel like there's going to be people who are going to be like, Kelsey, I didn't know I had to sleep up uh, upright or I can't sleep laying flat down. What do I do? That's your answer. I'm telling you. I used to use them when I was in high school, like as a study buddy, like I would sit up against them when I was doing my homework, but I'm telling, why is my hand like this? Um, I'm telling you guys, it really, really, really helps with your comfort level when you're trying to sleep because that's when your body does the most healing is when you sleep. So you have to make sure that you're getting a good night's sleep um, or at least, you know, somewhat of a good night's sleep. With us not being able to sleep on our stomach or really on our side, this little pillow buddy, you know, really helps. So if you can't find one, um, I'm going to link one from Amazon in the de description box below. I don't know if Walmart is selling them anymore. The one I had had like smiley faces and, you know, like emojis all over it. And my dad wanted it. So I gave it to my dad. <laughs> um, so yeah, that is one of the things I was really, really, really happy that I had. Last but not least, we're going to talk about one of the things that really helped to get me through my post-op life my folks the the first three months especially but really honing in on that first month after it's going to be any kind of water bottle this is my contigo water bottle this is my third one i have been going through these things like nobody's business um now my surgeon did not have any qualms with me using a straw I was using a straw, I feel like one month post-op, if not earlier. Um, but having a water bottle, having something that I could easily transport, and you want something that's not going to spill. This does not spill. I would have this in the bed with me. I would have this on the couch with me. I wanted to always have my water handy because you need to constantly be drinking. Water is key in your progression through your post-op life. Speaking of, let me go on and get a... So this is a 40 ounce container. You can get this at Walmart. They also have the ones that do not have a straw. So you're not bound to having a straw. If you don't want a straw or your surgeon is, is fully against them, you can get this without a straw. It has a handle. You can transport it very easily. I'm telling you guys, this was this was like my favorite thing, my favorite finding. Um, like I said, it just, it was transportable. I didn't have to worry about the, Look, I'm up here lying. I didn't have to worry about the spill. I didn't have to worry about that because I always wanted to have my water bottle close to me. So the five things that I think you would benefit from having in your early post-op life would be a water bottle, a heating pad, liquid Tylenol painkiller, and um, cozy pajamas like cozy nightgowns, cozy loose fitting comfortable clothes, socks and house shoes, and a heating pad. These were things that I use on a daily basis and I still to this day use my water bottle and I still wear my nightgowns. Um, I look for that, com that comfort, I look for that, that warm cozy feeling because it really helps to relax me. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was short and sweet to the point. Welcome back. If you have not and you would like to be, please make sure to hit that subscribe button. Become a member of my family, baby. I would love to have you here. Um, if you haven't and you would like to also, please make sure to join my Facebook group one bite at a time on Facebook. Um, we have some really good times there. We have some good discussions and some awesome, awesome, awesome advice conversations and just a lot of love over there i love you guys so 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 much thank you for being there thank you for being there thank you for being here not there and there well here and there thank you for being here i love you guys you guys could have been anywhere else in this youtube universe and you chose to spend some time with me until the next time i will see you guys peace out peace out